Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, you've got six more days until May and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE. This lesson, Tables of Data. I've marked a lot of mock exam papers in my time and one of the most common things I've seen when marking those is that students will get to a table with some data in it and pretty much give up on that question. They'll take a brief look at it, they'll maybe rush at it, but they won't really have a good go at it. Which is a shame, because any time you see a table of data in your exam, you ought to be thinking to yourself, excellent, there are some easy marks here, because there really are easy marks available whenever there's a table of data. They're always going to ask you to do pretty much the same thing which is they're going to ask you to interpret that data. So they're giving you the information. This is not information which you've had to learn, it's just something which you've got to look at and make a little bit of sense of. And that's all they're going to be looking for, that description of what does this data mean? What does it tell us? And it's pretty easy once you know how to read those tables. Let me show you. Let's start out with a really simple example first. This table of concentration against rate of reaction. So you can see here we've got an independent variable, the thing which we're changing, that's the concentration. And we've also got a dependent variable, the rate of reaction, or how quickly a reaction is going to happen. And you can see that there's a fairly clear relationship here. As we increase the concentration, we also increase the rate of reaction. Now the way I phrase that is the way, if you're having to describe this, you should be trying to phrase things. As x is increased, y, and then either increases or decreases. Occasionally it might stay the same. If it's just one mark, then that's all you really need to be saying. As we increase x, then y also increases, and you just insert whatever x and y are. Now if it's more than one mark, you may need to take it a step further. It may be that it doesn't give you a nice straight line. So it could be that as x increases, y increases quickly at first and then slowly later on. You may need to describe it in a little bit more detail, but that's basically all there is to something like this. I'm sure that one wasn't too much of a stretch for most of you. So let's look at a more complex one. This one is actually based on one of the tables which was in the exam from last year's exam papers. It's not quite the same, but it's very, very similar. This was also in one of the mock papers which I set my year 10s recently and what a lot of students did was got to this and just kind of skipped it. They had a brief look at it but they even missed the easy bits of the question, never mind the slightly more difficult bits of the question. As soon as that table was there it was almost like they blanked and went straight to the next question. But again, this is telling you information. All you've got to do is say what information it's telling you and you'll get marks. It is a bit intimidating, it's a bit complex at the moment, so let's try and simplify it a little bit first. The first thing we need to think about is what this is showing us. Well, it's showing us how three different oils have reacted with bromine water and discoloured it. You don't even need to know any more details of the question to be able to start making some sense of this. It's a lot clearer though if we separate those different oils out. The oils are our independent variable here, and they're each on a different row. Generally speaking, your independent variable will be on separate rows. So look for the things going horizontally. And just to make it really clear, let's make them separate colours. And don't think that this is just something that I can do here. You, of course, can do this in an exam. You could shade them slightly differently just to make it clear to you. Now, I'm not saying spend all of the exam sitting there colouring in the boxes in the table, but if it helps you to just shade one with horizontal lines and shade one with diagonal lines and leave another one blank, then that is all fine. Do whatever helps you. Now let's just look at the first of these oils on that first row. Some sort of test has been done, something to do with bromine water. Again, doesn't matter exactly what that test is. There has been a test which has been done three times to this oil and then a mean's been taken. Now you need to make sure that you know how to calculate means. Expect that to come up somewhere on one of the science papers. It may well come up on other papers as well, almost certainly on your maths papers. It could show up in things like geography too. Calculating a mean is really, really easy though. All you do is take however many results you've got, you add them all together, and then divide by how many there were. So in this case, to calculate these means, we've taken all three results, 
added them up and then divided by 3 because we started with 3. So that's what we've got here. Oil 1, a test has been done, it's been done 3 times and then a mean has been taken of all those tests. The same has been done for all 3 oils. Every one of them has had a test done 3 times to them and the means have been taken. Now it can look a little bit confusing with the means written next to the raw data like this. Remember the means are not raw data, they've been processed, you've done a calculation on them. So let's highlight where those means are just to separate them out and make it absolutely clear that they are separate to those raw results. What we also need to be aware of is that these means in some way relate to this idea of how much unsaturated oil there is in a sample. You don't need to worry too much about what that means at this point. Just be aware that there is some sort of correlation between our highlighted column of means here and these percentages of unsaturated oil. On the exam paper this table is based on, the first thing that they asked you to do in the question was to find the anomalous result. They said there is an anomalous result somewhere in that table and you need to circle it. Again, an awful lot of people didn't even notice this was part of the question. But if you're looking for an anomalous result, what you need to do is focus on the raw data, not the means, not this stuff about percentages of unsaturated oil. That is all totally irrelevant. You are looking at the raw data which has been collected by the person who's been conducting the experiment. So, it's these nine boxes for tests 1, 2 and 3 for the three oils. And what you're looking for when you're looking for an anomaly is you're looking for that result which is sticking out like a sore thumb. You're looking for the result which is very different to the others in its own row or very different to its mean. As you've no doubt already spotted, we've got one which fits that description. This one for test two for our second oil, that one is quite different to the other two results for test one and test three and it's also quite different to the mean for that row. The mean for that row is very similar to the other two results and this is because when working out that mean, what we've done is discard that anomalous result. We've ignored it it's probably down to some sort of error and so we've totally ignored it because it doesn't agree with the others. And so that is clearly the anomalous result. If we'd just done two tests, there'd be no way to know which one was the anomalous result. So you need to have done three tests in order to figure out which ones seem to be right and which one seems to be wrong. Now why might that anomalous result have occurred? They do quite like asking you about this as well as asking you to find the anomalous result. And really there are two key reasons why you might have got some sort of anomalous result in there. Firstly, it could be down to the sort of error which is made by the person taking the result specifically, and you do need to be specific, specifically they could have misread the scale. So if they're measuring a distance or if they're measuring a time perhaps, or if they're recording uh, a height or a volume, any of these things, if there's some sort of scale that they've got to read off, they could have misread it. It happens all the time. People are fallible. So that would be an absolutely fine description so long as it's relevant to the question. If it's something like measuring a mass on a balance, well, you can't really misread that. In that case, it's probably more likely to be a zero error. That is, the person didn't properly zero the scale before they put their mass on there. If in doubt and they ask you what might have caused an anomaly, just stick to those two. Either someone misread the scale or they didn't properly zero whatever the measuring instrument they were supposed to be using was. Those will be fine in almost every circumstance. It would be an extremely unusual circumstance where one or the other wasn't fine. Just read the question carefully and they should be okay. So. We've got our data, we've sorted out our means. What we need to do now is figure out what relationship this data shows us. And we don't really need to worry about all the raw data of tests one, two, and three. All we need to focus on are these means which we've now calculated. The whole point of calculating the mean is to reduce the risk of anomalies swaying the results one way or another. And we've done that. It's already been done for us, in fact. So what we need to do now is describe how these means relate to the percentage of unsaturated oil in our different types of oil. Since we don't need the raw data, let's get rid of it. We can totally ignore it, so let me just remove that from this table. That's getting better. 
it's a lot simpler all of a sudden. And again, this is likely to be the situation with any tables which you see. If you've got means in there, you can ignore the rest of the raw data unless they've asked you to look for anomalies. If they haven't asked you to look for anomalies, then just focus on those means. They've already calculated the answers for you. Now we need to look at how this data relates to the other column of data. How do those means relate to the amount of unsaturated oil in our different types of oils? But it's still not totally clear. We could make it even clearer. And all we need to do to do that is sort out the data into numerical order. If I do that, then I think you can see it becomes an awful lot clearer what's going on. Whenever you're describing a relationship, remember, phrase it in the form of as X increases, Y increases or decreases. Stick to that and you should be fine. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Well, you can see now that they're in order that as the mean number of drops of bromine water is increasing, the amount of unsaturated oil as a percentage in our sample is also increasing. Phrase it like that. Use what it says in the table as the headings. Quote directly from it. If you need to write out the whole thing, then do. But what we've got here, again, is as the amount of bromine water added to the sample increases, the percentage of unsaturated oil in our sample also increases. Let's remind ourselves of what the original table looked like compared to our new one. And you can see that with just a little bit of thought and processing, we can turn what looks like quite an unwieldy and difficult to understand table into something much more easy. This is about as difficult now as that original table that I showed you, the simple one, the one where the relationship was clear. All the information which you needed was really in that means column. You could totally ignore the rest for most of this question, except for the bit where you were talking about anomalies. So if you've got a means column, focus on that more than anything else. That raw data is probably only going to be there just to add a little bit of confusion and to check whether you know what you're doing. Remember, anytime they give you a table, they are giving you information and they just want you to describe what that information says. So it should be fairly easy marks. Don't let them put you off by showing you a really ugly, complicated table. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it really helps my channel when you like, subscribe and share these videos. Let people know I'm going to succeed in my GCSE. All the links and info for this video are in the description and please let me know what you thought in the comments or on Twitter at MrThorntonUK or use the hashtag SucceedInMyGCSE. There are loads more GCSE science videos on my channel too. Here's another one which YouTube thinks you might find useful. You can click my picture just here to subscribe, click down there to check how well you understood with the Snap Quiz website and app, and you can click just here to get my revision guides. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.